Hi, everybody. It's Susan again. It's been a while. I haven't been recording anything or doing any work for the past week because I just moved back to Spain. So I'm in my happy place again for the winter. Um, I wanted to thank you all for being here. First of all, uh, those of you who've been here for a while and also especially to welcome the new subscribers because there's quite a few new subscribers and you're most welcome here. Uh, another thing I wanted to say was uh, I really am feeling for all of those of you in the States, especially in North Carolina and in that whole region where there's been just immense flooding and terrible damage from the hurricane. It's been over a week now. I've seen a lot of your pictures. Uh, some of you have sent me emails and messages to express what's going on. And I'm really just um, my heart is with you. I just don't have any other words to say for you. It's just um, a difficult time. Um, and I want to emphasize before we look at the things that are going on astrologically that we're here for these difficult times. There's no exception. Sometimes life cruises along and things are really easy and we think, oh, we, somehow we drew the lucky card. And, uh, and then things change and things can change quite dramatically. Directional shifts are possible in any lifetime. Uh, and this is the magic of life. We don't know actually what's coming up. We never know. And so what you want to do is just make peace with life as it's happening. And especially shed any sense of entitlement, any sense that things should not be happening a particular way in your life. And the quicker you embrace the difficulty and the challenge, not to avoid the feelings, not to avoid the pain of it, but the quicker you embrace the truth of what's happening the quicker you'll be able to find your way through it and to, to survive and move on in life. Um, we're not here to wallow in our suffering. We're here to overcome and learn through everything that we have to go through. And sometimes that's really hard. Sometimes it's loss, big time loss. And uh, for some of you, I know that's happening right now. Um, and of course, that applies globally because we are in a situation collectively where there's just enormous loss and, and tragedy at the moment, and we have to find our way through that. We're, we are alive in this time. So there's no mistake. There's never any mistake. And um, I just want you to, to keep that in mind. You keep that in your heart. You're here for this. And the suffering is the teaching. It's not a punishment. That's all. How are you going to move through that suffering? So the closer we can get to our heart, to our spirit, to who we truly are and how we connect with each other on a day-to-day -day basis and how we connect to life itself, the more we can uh, nourish each other. And sometimes that's what we're here for. We're only here for each other. If we think we're here for ourselves and for our own comfort, we suffer. Sooner or later, we'll suffer. And if we think we're here for other people, then there's some meaning. And it might even be just a small animal. You're here for a little dog or a cat or saving the life of a bird. And that's a worthy life as well. Uh, so please bear that in mind. We're going to go through some difficult times ahead. And when we go through that together with a higher sense of purpose and a sense of the fleeting nature of life, the more graceful we'll find all of this passage. So be here for each other. And don't fall into this trap of hate and division and retribution and everything else. It's just not helpful. Um, and it's certainly not going to help you in the long run. So I just wanted to say that before we jump into the astrology, because the astrology is just showing us moment to moment what's going on. And sometimes in your comments, I see people saying, how's this going to be for me? Is this good or bad? And if you have that sense that things are good or bad in your life, you're missing the teaching that life brings. You know, there's nothing that is inherently good or bad. Things just happen and we make of it what we want. You know, so there are things that are maybe more or less easy to bear or desirable, but in the good, there's something that ends up being difficult. And in the bad, there are some beautiful moments as well. There's no inherent good or bad. So um, please keep that in mind and try to keep yourself focused on the truer meaning of your life, spirit and heart and all of that stuff. Um, so today I just wanted to bring you up to date with um, the two plan bigger planets that are shifting uh, in this week ahead. So basically we have Jupiter on the 9th of um, October that's going to be changing direction, stationing retrograde. And I'll look at that sign by sign. And then of course we have Pluto just a couple of days later on Saturday the 12th that's going to be uh, stationing direct. And so it's going to be uh, a change agent week, let's say, or middle of the month, 
Um, and then I'll finish up by looking at the 14th of October and um, what an, kind of an extraordinary day. Just not even sure what to make of that day, but uh, but I think it's worthy of looking at. So we'll look at that as we go forward. And um, and again, as always, I really appreciate your comments and your likes. And of course, if you subscribe, it helps me as well. I don't monetize this channel. Um, I don't do that for political, personal reasons. Uh, I don't, uh, I, ha I have to work with Google. <laughs> I have to work with um, with YouTube just to be able to connect with you all. And uh, there's no better platform, alas, in our moment uh, of time. Um, and so I, I do that um, because I'd like to connect with as many people as possible, let you know that I do these things as personal readings. I do this kind of work. Um, it's the majority of my work is the personal readings that I do. And um, for the rest, uh, I'm here because I really like to connect with people and share my work and share the message. So the more that you like and comment, um, and if you subscribe, if you like what I'm doing, that helps me just to reach more people, but it doesn't um, bring me any extra added value. Um, and there we are. So I just wanted to mention that because um, this is, for me, my way of connecting, which is uh, good enough uh, for me. <laughs> and then I don't have to get into the quagmire of Google. Here we are. Let's go to share. I'm going to share the Jupiter chart with you as it's stationing. This is on the 9th, which is Wednesday. Maybe you're watching this uh, before. And if not, then it's Wednesday, the 9th of October at 7 a.m. Universal Time, 7.04, basically Universal Time. Uh, these events, of course, happen over the course of a couple of days when the slower moving planets station they linger at these degree points. So Jupiter has been at this 21, sort of 20 arc minutes of a degree of Gemini point for quite some time. And it's basically hanging around this degree all of October within a couple of minutes of degree, arc minutes of a degree. So we're looking at Jupiter in Gemini still. And this is part of a longer story, a longer arc of events that's happening in context with uh, in the in the relationship let's say with the cycle of Saturn so we're in a longer Jupiter Saturn cycle and I'll touch on that later as well um, but we're for the moment just looking at the Jupiter chart this is a an event chart and the event chart tells us quite a lot about how the what the quality of the event is like and um, and then if you are finding degree points that line up with this in your chart then this will all will impact you all the more, but we'll all be impacted, of course, in a in a general way anyway. So we have a couple of really interesting trines in this. So Jupiter, just as as a reminder, is a benefic planet. It's the greater benefic, which what that means is it's the one that is literally the bigger planet. Um, it's the same when we talk about the greater malefic, Saturn is the bigger planet, it's it's greater in size, it's not necessarily worse or better. Uh, Jupiter is the greater benefic and Venus is the lesser benefic, they both bring good things in many ways, but they can also bring trouble in their own ways. And here we have Jupiter in the sign of its detriment, so it's not really comfortable in Gemini because Jupiter is very much about high-minded thinking and about going into more philosophical pursuits or deeper understanding. And Gemini tends to keep things factual. It's about the nitty-gritty kind of in and out of every day. Uh, it's also more superficial. It's an air sign and that goes uh, towards the light-hearted, jokey kind of social quality that Gemini brings it can be a very friendly energy. Jupiter in Gemini is very friendly, very outgoing, very easygoing with people, um, and also quite broad-minded. It's not too uh, dogmatic or fussy as Jupiter can actually be in its uh, sign of rulership, which is Sagittarius. But Jupiter also rules Pisces, and that's why while Saturn is in Pisces, there's quite a lot of doing and throwing, and we'll see that coming up in December. Um, with Saturn ruled by Jupiter now, Saturn has a different flavor as well. So the quality of Saturn is um, about this uh, engaging in what we believe. And Jupiter is all about that. What do I believe? And this is a really interesting moment as we come up for these four months ahead as Jupiter stations retrograde on the 9th of October and continues all the way through to the 4th of February in retrograde motion. 
as a way of deepening our understanding of what do I believe? What do I have faith in? Um, and also, what am I putting my attention on? This is a really important aspect of our current times because Jupiter and Gemini can get very easily distracted. There's some a quality of learning about a lot of different things and being attracted to a lot of different things that can be very helpful, but at the same time uh, can be a distraction from the greater purpose of life. So it is a good time to really knuckle down. And I find actually that's the helpful thing of the Jupiter squaring Saturn, that it helps us to slow down and it helps us to uh, ground the quality of that Jupiter, which wants to get into a number of different things in a way that might be missing the point or missing the opportunities that otherwise Jupiter can bring. Uh, Jupiter is also in this beautiful trine to Mercury, which rules it. So that's a separating trine. Mercury has just the day before um, perfected the trine with Jupiter. And then there's a, a trine from uh, Jupiter, uh, from the sun rather, to Jupiter, which is about to perfect. And that we'll see on the 14th of October, which is this very interesting day that has a lot of aspects, a really interesting combination of aspects. Um, and so this quality of trine to Jupiter from the ruler of the sign is really quite helpful. Uh, it brings an abundance of opportunities for learning and knowledge and wisdom. Now, keep in mind, this is an event chart, which means that it tells us the sort of overall flavor of the next four months. And so reconsidering and uh, reflecting on issues around agreements and relationships, which is the Mercury in Libra part, is a really good thing to uh, to think about as well. For those of you who are, again, affected by degree to these points, uh, anything within two, maybe three degrees of these points, let's call it 23 degrees, uh, or up to sort of 19 we could even go to 24 degrees to 18 degrees at the moment of any of the mutable signs, but especially of Gemini, but that also includes uh, Virgo and Sagittarius and Pisces. That will be affected quite strongly by this Jupiter station, so you'll be feeling that. And then as a passing um, reference, you're going to be feeling the Sun and Mercury trining that. And of course, if you have the Libra energy, you'll be feeling that directly from the sun and um, Mercury. So that would be your birthday around this time. It'd be a nice birthday chart. Anybody who's having their birthday around this time, say from the 8th until the 14th or 15th of, um, of October, is actually having really interesting solar return charts. So uh, that could be a nice thing for you to uh, explore. So we have a couple of other active um, uh, angles here, which are really interesting. We have Jupiter in a long uh, long term, meaning several weeks, of uh, a sextile to Chiron. Jupiter was already sextiling Chiron at the eclipse of the 2nd of October. If you wanted to hear what I wanted to say about that, there's a video up already about that, sign by sign. And uh, that Jupiter in a sextile to Chiron is a really interesting opportunity, again, to get clear about what you have faith in, what you believe in, and perhaps coming from a place of not, not being sure of yourself or your place in the world. Uh, Jupiter has a lot to do with people who are wiser than us. It could be parents or teachers, religious figures, spiritual guides. Um, any quality that brings us wisdom and knowledge is in the Jupiterian category. And with Chiron in a sextile to that, there's some kind of an awareness around what we may have felt we have missed out on or lost, or what we're trying to understand in a way that is maybe different uh, or coming through pain compared to earlier, perhaps even compared to childhood. Chiron often also shows us where we are sabotaging ourselves, where we're doing something that we really shouldn't be doing, and that we know either we should do what we're, we should stop doing what we're already doing, or we need to start doing what we're not doing. And either way, the Chiron helps to show that. And with Jupiter in a positive flowing kind of graceful um, sextile, we can take action in the direction of correcting that, whatever we're missing out on. So Chiron is also opposing this Mercury. So it's creating this interesting dynamic again uh, that would have perfected the day before. But again, an uh, opposition from Chiron to Mercury shows that there may be something of a, an issue with relationships and connection around how we're communicating, how we're reaching out to each other. Again, this could be collectively and it can also be very much individually. There's a T-square forming. That T-square will perfect 
uh, when Pluto shifts signs. And then again on the 14th, we've got a T-square forming with Mars. Mars is ruling this Chiron. And a T-square between Mercury, Chiron, and Mars is suggesting something of a nature of an adjustment, a choice, uh, something that needs to change or to be taken, some kind of action needs to be taken based on how we feel about things. Mars in Cancer has a lot to do with our feelings. But because it's in a square to Mercury, we may be unable to articulate it or we may articulate it in a way that is actually tense or catchy or a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, this can also bring about some kind of healing over the course of this week or a couple of weeks around this time where we can find ourselves um, maybe blurting something out or saying something in a way that we may later regret. We do have the moon in Sagittarius. It can be a little bit like that, and it's in a square to Neptune, so we might be not really seeing things clearly or we might be seeing things as we wish to see them. Um, and not really as they genuinely are. And so that can have us maybe blurting things out or saying things in a way that isn't constructive. And we can always uh, come back and figure out what we need to do about that. Remember, we're looking at very supportive trines here. Mercury, the ruler of Jupiter, is trining Jupiter at the time or has just trined Jupiter at the time of this station. So it's a really nice signature. We also have Venus in a trine to Mars. Now, Venus is ruled by Mars. And that helps a lot. So Venus is ruled by Mars. Mars is guiding Venus from a place of cooperation. Venus herself is ruling that Mercury and Sun and the South Node, while Mars is ruling Chiron and the North Node still. So that's been a long uh, year, over a year, 14, 15 months already that Mars is ruling the North Node in Aries. But as Venus is trining Mars, this is something that brings some kind of steady cooperation. It can be emotional healing. It can be very deep patterns of understanding, but either way, it's quite helpful. A trine in the water signs is very flowy and uh, very enthusiastic, very inspired. It can also be highly emotional, again, be especially true because we have a Jupiter-ruled moon. And that moon, again, is in that square to Neptune, both ruled by Jupiter. Neptune in Pisces is also ruled by Jupiter. So there may be a lot of emotionality, but sometimes we need to let go of these emotions. We just need to let them come out. So there are times for the emotions to flow, and it's healing. It can be a very healing quality, and especially as we see that connection here with Chiron. Uh, the thing to be aware of is that the, is the emotions linger too long. So the emotions are meant to shift the energy. They come to the surface and move through you. So notice that any emotion that goes longer than about a minute and a half, usually they say around 90 seconds, if emotion lasts longer than that, that's your mind kicking in and your mind is reproducing the hurt or the idea or the belief or the misunderstanding, again, we're talking about Neptune squaring the moon, that might be creating this sense of pain or hurt or victimization, Neptune in Pisces, uh, that makes us feel like something should be different. So just to say that if you linger too long with the emotions, you're creating that, recreating that over time with your own thinking. And that's where we get this help from Jupiter in a trine to Mercury, um, can you can you think and feel your way through this with a, while at the same time letting it go? Air signs are very good at allowing things to move through, move beyond it. Don't linger with it. The Mars trining Venus might hold on a little bit. There can be a, a tendency, especially with Venus and Scorpio, to linger around emotions and hold on to things. And that Venus is also in an inconjunct building to an inconjunct or quincunx with that Jupiter. So that's a potential here. It's not perfected at the time of this chart, but it's still there. And that creates also an inconjunct between Venus and Chiron that over the course of the next two days creates what's called a yod. So Venus is the solution. And it means that we need to look deeper at our own emotional state and how we ourselves are creating or recreating patterns that are not constructive. Now, this is one of the reasons that Venus in Mars World Scorpio is not super helpful because she lingers, she holds on to emotions and resentments or strategizes around finding ways of manipulating in relationships that can be uh, undermining the trust in relationships. And it's often based on a mistrust in the first place. 
Um, what else do we need to say about this? So this is the, this is just the event chart. Of course, this will affect you each differently, and we'll look at that as we go forward. Uh, but I do find that this is going to be an, a rich time, keeping in mind that this is, imagine, almost like a natal chart, if you like, for the Jupiter stationing retrograde. And as it's stationing, if we, we move now, go minute by minute, we're going to see that Jupiter is in this, um, oh, hang on, we need to go back one hour, because I just realized we've caught this off. I switched the chart in it just before. There we go. So we've got Jupiter now retrograde. <laughs> That's where it should be. Jupiter is now retrograding. And um, that that uh, carries this flavor of the next four months. So again, it's from the 9th of October all the way through till the 4th of uh, February. And Jupiter will be stationing at around 11 degrees of uh, Gemini. Of, um, yes, Gemini. So I will come back, of course, later throughout the year and have a look at all of those different patterns as they interact with other planetary aspects and, and lunations and things. I'm not going to talk about the full moon at the, in this video. I'll come back with a second video separately about that just to, to highlight the different phases of the moon. But we're still in the phase of the eclipse. And that eclipse, of course, being a new moon that we had on the 2nd of October, we're a week away. And so this is the quarter, uh, first quarter moon that we're getting around this eclipse as the moon shifts into Capricorn, we will then get the full first quarter moon later in the day on the 9th of October. Uh, we can consider that that um, is also part of the Pluto dynamic where Pluto stations and uh, comes into its direct motion, which we'll have a look at now. And so the oh, before we do that, perhaps I'll have a look as well at the Jupiter square Saturn, because that's a big part of this. So as Jupiter continues its retrograde motion, remember it goes all the way till the 4th of February, it's also going to come back into a pattern of square, which it already did in mid-August. It was at 19 degrees of Gemini to Pisces when Jupiter direct squared Saturn, uh, which had recently turned retrograde. Now we have a direct Saturn at 14 degrees of Pisces squaring now a retrograde Jupiter. So this is the second square in the cycle. We're going to get a third square at the beginning of June. So when um, on 9th, 10th of June, when Jupiter just shifts into Cancer and Saturn just shifts into Aries, we're going to get another square. So that'll have a different flavor, different signs, cardinal energy instead of mutable energy. But this is a big part of the, the dynamic between Jupiter and Saturn. It's a little bit of um, a sense of slowing down, slowing your role, questioning your choices, questioning your beliefs, questioning the things that you wanted to grow and expand. This can be, uh, again, very welcome. As I said, it can be sometimes with Gemini particularly a little bit too much. You might bite off too much. Believe that you can do way too much because Jupiter is not in strong dignity in Gemini, so it's a little bit all over the shop. And this uh, Saturn square can just have uh, a quality of, let's check this out. Let's see if this really can last. Can Is this road worthy? And, uh, and does this work for you? So when Jupiter is uh, squaring Saturn as it's retrograding, it also comes with a, um, a moon squaring the nodes. So that's, uh, sorry, the sun squaring the nodes rather from early Capricorn. Uh, so there is again a whisper of this cardinality that's on the way as the signs, uh, as the Jupiter and Saturn will change to cardinal signs in 2025. Uh, it's something that you can keep in mind. You don't have to uh, plan for that, but just keep in mind that the mutability and flexibility, uh, maybe confusion that can also come with a lot of mutability or indecision is going to shift into a more action-oriented quality in the middle of uh, 2025. And we'll see that from the months of sort of April, May, June, especially. Uh, but this is already poking at that in December. It's an inkling of what might need to change. And that comes around the holiday season for many people. We also have this second opposition between Mars and Pluto. The first time was in um, around the um, end of October, beginning of November. Now, as Mars is going to retrograde back to the one degree point of, um, of Leo, 
it's going to be in opposition to Pluto in the first degree of Aquarius, and that will be at the end of the year. So a very dynamic energy shift. And again, that Mars will go back into the cardinal sign of Cancer. So there'll be an energy that comes with that, a kind of an energy that is uh, triggering some change, triggering some kind of a need for things to be shaken up and move in a new direction. Cardinal energy starts, gets things going. So let's also have a look now at the Pluto station. And this is happening on the 12th of October. Just hang on one second because the gardeners have started cleaning up. Just a wee bit loud. So I don't know what that sounds like for you, but it's really annoying for me. Um, so now we have the Pluto direct station and uh, that is where we have, and here we have to go again, one hour ahead. So we have this Pluto in its now direct motion. So that means that from this Saturday, the 12th of October, Pluto is now moving out of Capricorn for the last time in our lifetimes. And this will be extremely welcome for especially the Capricorns, but also anyone who has the cardinal angles, particularly anyone who has strong cardinal energy. So again, that's Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn. Now, as Pluto is shifting into the last half, less than half of a degree of Capricorn, we're going to start to see things happening in intense ways that will complete or highlight or um, emphasize these last 16 years of Pluto in Capricorn. Now, Pluto does not stay 16 years in each sign. I keep hearing people say what's going to happen in the next 16 years or 14 years or whatever. Pluto is going to be over 20 years in Aquarius. Pluto changes the duration based on the constellation or the size of the signs themselves. And so it's not a steady pattern. It doesn't have a steady uh, orbit because it's way, way, way beyond the, the Kuiper belt and it goes uh, way beyond our visible planets. And so uh, Pluto has its own way of doing things. Um, and so what we've understood from this period of time since the beginning of actually the actual very end of 2007 has been a lot to do with how we are governed, who's got power over us. And this is another thing that can be reflected on, including in the context of that Jupiter. Uh, what do I believe and who do I give my power to? Who am I giving away my power to? Um, Pluto is showing us that there's some kind of dynamic with authority figures, a dynamic again, that might have something to do with our belief in structures and how things should always be and forgetting that actually things are constantly changing. Things are in a constant state of flux. Um, we think that the government we have or the system of governance or the religion or the buildings around us or the banking system is all, it's always been this way. And that's not at all true. It's just in our awareness, in our very short attention span, it has always been this way. And things are changing. They're going to be quite dramatically changing over the next 20 years. The changing phases, the when the planets go from one sign to another, are usually the most volatile. So we're still in this very volatile energy of Pluto shifting between the cardinal energy and the fixed energy. Um, Pluto, I've done videos on Pluto in Aquarius, and I've I'll guide you to those and to watch instead of going through the, the theme again, but just to have a sense that this is going to be a last kind of blast in terms of how we perceive uh, issues around governments, who's got power. We've seen things in the last 16 years where we realize that there are aspects of finance and banking and government and what people call the elites, what I prefer to call the predator class, which is frankly abusive towards people. And there's going to be this backlash as Pluto goes through Aquarius, where there's a change in the way that people see their own capacity, their own power. And that can cause its own issues as people start to push against these systems in ways that require new organizational structures, new ways of relating. And again, the more that you can connect to your spiritual understanding, the more you can connect to each other locally, um, through care, through support, through looking after each other's needs, through making sure you're establishing connections that are supportive, that each is bringing their skill sets uh, to, to different ways of showing up in community, the more you're going to thrive in this new energy. Uh, the Pluto energy has also got a, uh, a square, also a cardinal square to uh, Mercury. 
And that again is reflecting this quality, as I mentioned earlier, with the Mercury in a trine to Jupiter. Now we have this Mercury Libra squaring Pluto, and we're looking at that inequality of relational uh, energy, but also perhaps what is fair? What is justice? And um, where's the harmony? How do I find that? How can I uh, make that work? Pluto squaring Mercury is intense. There's a depth around that. It's a need to know. I want to know. I must know. Um, Pluto is about everything that's true and real, and it will expose the truth. It will reveal the darker underside of things, that it can include more shadowy aspects, both of ourselves as well as our collective participation. And in this case with Capricorn, the collective authority figures, the, the aspects of authority. Uh, so these are interesting times for sure. As the Chinese would say, um, we, we're here for it. Remember, we are here. Therefore, everything is um, valid. Nothing is wrong. Nothing is out of place. There's no mistake. We're here in this moment. This is the life that we are given. And the more we practice gratitude, the more we can live through gratitude, the more we can find the harmony of finding our way through all of these different ways of showing up in the world. One thing that I would say, especially at this time, especially for 2024 and 2025, is to unplug from these old systems because Pluto, as it's leaving Capricorn, is really asking us to drop and walk away from things that don't work. And one of the things that stands out is the Western so-called democratic uh, solution for government. It's not working. Um, not to say we shouldn't try to work democratically with each other, but to say that the systems that we have come become used to are not working any longer. And so do you really only have a choice between two people when you vote for somebody or when you want to move your, direct, your government in one or another direction? Is that true or is that what you've become used to? So these questions are there for you to really meditate on at this time. And the deeper um, and more courageous you can get in terms of answering those questions and in terms of releasing these old habitual patterns that just keep su the suffering lingering, the better we're going to be able to move into a period of change uh, because the resistance and the, the turmoil are coming from people not wanting to let go of old systems. And the reason they don't want to let go of old systems is either that they gain, they profit personally or through power. You know, the venal politicians that we have are all there for their own well-being, basically. Or that they're complacent. And that might be uh, people in the body politic who just can't be bothered. And they'd rather somebody else take decisions for them. And if you do that, well, then, as the saying goes, you get the democracy that you deserve, you get the government you deserve. If you're not trying to recreate something, create something better. Uh, we do have also Mercury in an inconjunct within a degree of um, between uh, Neptune in Pisces at almost 28 degrees of Pisces and Mercury at just over 27 degrees. And that in conjunct again is this awkward energy. It doesn't find its way easily. It's a little bit... Um, uh, maybe cagey or not so clear. And Mercury is also in an inconjunct or quincunx again with Uranus. And so there's something new. There's some ed this edginess, this feeling of discomfort, this feeling of things not being really there. It requires a new way. And Mercury is the new way. This is where we have this interesting, what's called a yod, this um, sextile where we come from two inconjuncts towards this Mercury, this, the solution is here in the Mercury. And we've seen that that Mercury is pushing into a square with Pluto, needing some truth, needing to understand how do we get to harmony? How do we get to connection? How do we get to understand ourselves and our relationships um, in, this, in this moment? It's not going to come through what we've already understood. This much we know, because Pluto is here for big change. Uranus next year is here for big change. And very soon also in April, um, Neptune is also here for big change. So next year, from April through June, April through July, perhaps, we have these incredible shifts, these uh, epochal shifts that are going to happen that will change the context of our environment. And so all the more benefit to, to be gleaned from changing your internal relationship to all of that, just really trying to understand how you can... Um, manifest your own life in a way that's much more constructive. I also wanted to show you the 14th. That would be for here, we're just going to move through the current transits. So we're going to go day by day and get to the 14th. 
Um, the 14th has some really interesting dynamics. I'd love to see kids born on this day and how they end up, um, you know, developing over time. I'll just move it a couple of hours ahead. We've got it at 1140. This is in, uh, in uh, universal time, basically. So let's just push it ahead because I wanted to get to the point where the moon and um, the moon and Saturn were basically conjoining. There we go. Roughly. Yeah. So uh, we have a couple of really interesting dynamics. We've got the moon and Saturn conjoining. So moon Saturn is where we get really serious. There can be a, a feeling of lack or heaviness or a feeling of needing to be um, on our own. Introspection is a really good word for moon Saturn. It's really where we pull in. And this is very helpful at this time where we have this opportunity to reflect on what's going on, how are we taking action? Uh, how are we taking responsibility? What are my boundaries? What's um, Where am I allowing things to overwhelm me? Where am I allowing things to support me? And this is um, very much when you have the moon in Pisces, there can be um, almost a professional victim mode that kicks in and, and a sense of things being overwhelming. Um, sometimes with Saturn too, you can have this feeling that things are just too hard. Saturn retrograding is going back to this place where it was in March. Uh, so if you think back to March 2024 or even into, let's say, April, because it would still have been moving around that degree point, but especially March, uh, this is something that you will be able to reflect upon and consider March, April is being called in again in December when Saturn goes direct. So there's something that you're understanding, you're working through it, you're creating for yourself, learning through yourself. Um, that is coming through your own sense of vulnerability or boundaries that you need to form. The other thing that's really prominent here is that we have this T-square between the Mars in Cancer ruled by this moon and the uh, Chiron sun opposition at uh, 21 degrees of the cardinal sign. So 21 cardinal is a really strong indicator at this particular time. We still have the sextile there between Chiron and Jupiter that lasts all through the month of October, a little bit longer. And now we have a lovely trine all through that day, uh, Monday the 14th of October. We have this lovely trine from the sun to um, Jupiter. And that supports the energy in a very flowing way. But this pesky square to the sun can also have us reactive. It can be very emotional. It can be very challenging. And it's something to be aware of. If you are planning something for that day, um, just know that it can be very dynamic. It can be very helpful to do something, for example, on your own. Uh, do something that is for you or on your own in a way that allows you to use this energy uh, dynamically, where you can really feel the motivation behind the Mars square sun, uh, the motivation between Mars squaring Chiron, where it might possibly get you in trouble if you're trying to do this in tandem with other people. Because again, Mars is ruling Venus still until she finally moves into Sagittarius. So I thought this was a really interesting day. We also have a building trine between Venus and Neptune. Can be very romantic. Again, if you can get over any kind of quibbles or difficulties with partners or anybody that you have anything to negotiate with um, or around, then this is a really opportune day for that because we do have this lovely trine, the Jupiter trine in the sun's fantastic. And then the, the Venus in a quite romantic or very creative trine to Neptune is smoothing out the rough edges, but can be a fantastic day for you to deepen your contemplation, to work on your and projects, your own basis for understanding your experience of life in this moment, uh, or maybe doing something more therapeutic, doing something that helps to uh, build the um, the foundation, let's say, going forward. Uh, when the moon moves beyond uh, Saturn, then the, the heaviness might lift. There's a feeling that, um, that you will have understood something, that you can also feel that you're um, maybe building a structure around your emotional nature that allows for, you know, better maybe management of your emotions, um, something that is extremely uh, useful, very helpful at this time. Um, Pisces, uh, moon can tend to, um, uh, can inflate emotional things or feel that things are just too too much. And, um, and that's not going to 
um, serve you and it won't serve the people around you. So this is again, uh, if you go back to the Jupiter that is ruling this moon at this time, go back to the initial Jupiter stationing retrograde part and have a look at that. It's a good time to reflect on all of these things. But overall, a really interesting day, a great day for you to withdraw or create on your own, perhaps establish something that feels like a really useful, um, focused time to really examine what's going on deep inside. Uh, we have Venus ruling Uranus and opposing Uranus on this day. So again, if you're talking about relations or commitments or anything to do with contracts or money, it's a challenging day. It's not so easy. There can be some surprises. There can be some issues within relationships that might call in um, a need for change. It can be stimulating, can be very positive. Uh, but if, the more that you use it consciously, the more you realize that all, any of these emotional upsets or ups and downs that can be happening at this time are fleeting. They're not going to linger. It's just at this particular stage. But it's coming in the context of a Pluto shifting uh, signs that is, you know, really lingering at that 2938 Capricorn. And it's also in the context of a Jupiter that is now retrograde, not really bringing us its uh, strength, not really bringing us its best in terms of expanding, but making us more tend to go within. So things are not necessarily working in the direction that we would have hoped that they would, not to say that they would necessarily go wrong, but that the, the Jupiter squares uh, where the Jupiter square Saturn will probably require some reworking of whatever the plans are that you have. Right, I just want to go back now to start with Aries, and we're going to have a look sign by sign at some of these things, especially the Jupiter and Pluto changing. So uh, with Aries, Sun, Moon, and Rising, so if your Sun is in Aries, this is where you start to understand your perspective on life or where you are in relationship to your life and also how you feel your purpose or your career is going. Uh, it's your consciousness. The Sun represents how you perceive your life. And if it's the Ascendant sign, that's yourself. It's all aspects of your life. And if it's the Moon, then that's more the mind and the emotional aspects of life. It can also relate to the house or, and home. So Jupiter is in your third house and it's changing directions at this point. And as Jupiter retrogrades, you might have some thinking to do over how your goals have been or your sense of motivation. Uh, Mars is in the fourth house. This might have something to do with your motivation. Mars is ruling you, by the way, Aries. Um, so this might have something to do with how you feel around home and family or your lineage or your emotional security, your psychological security. And as Jupiter is in the third house of your mind and your communications and how you connect with people in local space, uh, how you learn things, there might be something that you're realizing needs to be reviewed or there might be a need to go deeper into understanding. This is a territory that you've already covered over the last uh, three or four months. And now you're going to go back and readjust. You're going to go back and explore how things uh, might need to shape up a little differently. Jupiter is ruling your 12th house as well. And the 12th house has to do with your interior life, let's say, or the unconscious aspects of your life. And Jupiter also rules your ninth, and that has to do with higher thinking. So your, your notion of higher mind or your religious or spiritual sense is part of this Jupiter retrograde, very strongly so. So the way that you choose to communicate or the way that you choose to take action based on things, how you use your will, your free will, willpower, it's going to be more based in these understandings that Saturn is helping you with here in the 12th house. And as, of course, Jupiter ruling that uh, Sagittarius 9th house, it's got a lot to do with how you feel, uh, your purpose in life, how you feel your uh, sense of what is true for you in your spiritual uh, notion. So this is what I said earlier about Jupiter, applies very, very strongly to Aries here. Um, the third house is also siblings and uh, can be something to do with connecting through extended family as well. And of course, if there's anything to do with travel, Jupiter definitely represents travel. It re represents expansion in a physical sense as well as in the sense of ideas, but especially in Gemini has to do with travel. The third house is about moving around, but it tends to be more connected to short-term travel, or at least in these days, what we consider to be short uh, duration travel. It could be a weekend here or there, or moving around in your local space. However, Jupiter does rule your 12th and your 9th, so this might also involve people at a distance or people from 
faraway lands or um, traveling to those places as well. And you also, of course, have uh, Pluto moving from your 10th back into your 11th house. And it's direct now for the very last time, the very, very end of your 10th house. So a lot of what you're reflecting on at this time has to do with your career and how it is you've been uh, showing up in the world. It doesn't have to be your active career in terms of what you make money from, but it's how you participate out the, the front door. When you leave your home, how you show up in the world, your 10th house is your ambitions, your drives. It's similar to the third. The third is your, your aims in the short term. The 10th house is your overall life ambition, but it's also your reputation. So you might even notice that in the last 16 years or so, Pluto has transformed the way that you show up in the world. You know, are you married, divorced? Um, wh what's your standing in the community? What's your ambition around all of those worldly ways of showing up? Um, how do you see yourself in relationship to authority figures, whether they be bosses or your own inner authority? Or even parents, of course, the 10th house can represent our parents. So all of these things are very much on the agenda for these few months as we go forward with Pluto. You have until the 19th of November before it shifts into your 11th house of friends and once again goes uh, pretty much till 2044 through your house of friendship and uh, and your future and your vision for the future. So really taking a step back at this moment as, uh, as Jupiter is uh, retrograding in Gemini can help you move into November, December and beyond where Pluto is going to completely transform your relationship to your future. So uh, make the most of this, Aries. I'm sure you will. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. The Taurus, we have Jupiter in your second house of money. This is a place where you might have uh, reflected on issues to do with what supports you, including family and the people around you and your values and the value of things and the stuff that you own. And now with Jupiter retrograding, there may be something you need to re reflect on. It could be something to do with investments or property um, that's movable, things that you own, like whether it be gold ingots or a car or um, nice things in your house. There can be something to do with that. Uh, Jupiter in the second house can also have something to do with words and expressing creatively. And Jupiter is deeply creative in Gemini. That is helped by the fact that Mars is in the third house. And Mars is uh, very happy in the third house because it learns very quickly how to do new things, new skills, for example. And this can be an opportune time for you to reestablish um, uh, some kind of foundation in writing or um, some kind of skill around creativity of some description. Um, this is also true because Jupiter rules your 11th house of your vision for your future, and it rules your 8th house of your depth and um, inner experience of life. It's also the house of the occult and things that you understand from mysterious ways, uh, whether it be unconsciously or through family patterns that you're realizing are becoming important. Since Mars is in the third house, of extended family, there may be some issue there, Jupiter retrograding in the second house of family. Um, it's definitely a time where you can understand something needs to change or how you, how you might engage in communication with your family needs to change. So we have Mars in a, in a vulnerable place in Cancer in the third house. It can be a little bit snarky when it's in the third house and especially in Cancer. So you might be feeling a bit moody you might be feeling a little bit running hot and cold at times, and especially as there's this, um, in, in this moment of the middle of October, you have this square to Chiron in the 12th. There may be an awareness of how you've been feeling all of this time that is only coming to the surface this year because Chiron has been um, at that 21 degree of Aries for most of the past year. Um, and then that Mars will be showing that to you. It'll be, it'll be um, helping you express that. Uh, so Uranus, of course, continues in your first house. It's in opposition to Venus around the middle of the month. So there might be some dynamic in relationship that requires you paying more attention, uh, maybe to how you need to change or how the people in your life might need to change. Any issues around possessivity or jealousy, um, anything to do with, uh, again, shared resources. Venus is going to start to show you that, especially as she's moving from the 7th into the 8th, just a few days after the middle of October, and with Jupiter in the second house, there can be some issues that need to be recapped, let's say, in terms of what you share with others and, and how you might share that. 
Uh, it's in a trine to the sun in your sixth house of work, so this might have to do with salary and renegotiating salary. That could be a really good outcome for you, especially as Venus moves into your eighth. Then you'll start to see results from whatever negotiation might be underway around this middle of the month period. So uh, Taurus, you've also got Pluto coming from the ninth for the very last time. It's now moving finally towards your 10th house to where it's going to stay for 20 years. And you've had Pluto changing your vision for your future and your sense of purpose. So it's a, the bigger sense of your life. And the 11th house is your immediate future and your dreams and hopes and wishes, how you engage socially, the house of gains and how you might you know, get, get something from your connections with people or from the work that you do. Whereas the ninth house is a sense of deeper purpose, or some people say higher purpose that can work as well, deeper and higher. Um, with Pluto, perhaps deeper is a better word. Uh, something that has made you more serious about what you believe, something that makes you more serious about how you participate in life, and then Pluto will help you bring that out into the tenth house. So as you use this opportunity in the next four months where Jupiter is going to be retrograding, will contribute enormously to um, how you use that. Uh, Pluto going through the 10th house. It is, it is for the very last time trining your first house. It starts to square your first house. So when Pluto starts to square you, and which is your house of self, it will change your life in dramatic ways. You've already had a flavor of that over the last year and a half, but that will be a long standing change that you're going forward into a very big period of transformation as Pluto goes across the top of your chart. Uh, for more on the Pluto change, you can uh, hear any one of the Pluto videos that I've done. Many, many have, have appeared um, since the end of 2022, so you'll get more information there. And so Gemini, we have, uh, of course, Jupiter retrograding in your house of self. And this is very important because there's a reflection on how you personally want to expand into your life, how you want to grow uh, how you want to reach out into your career because Jupiter rules your career, rules your uh, vision or your vocation in terms of your ambitions in life, how you show up when you step out the door. Um, maybe this is about social standing as well. Am I married? Am I not married? All of these factors are a part of that Jupiterian quality. Jupiter also rules your partnerships, your seventh house of other people, business partners, life partners, the important person sitting across the table from you. So you're going through a period of real reconsideration, something that requires a little bit of redoing. Uh, not uh, a bad thing. When Jupiter goes through the first house, there can be a feeling of trying too many things or expanding in too many different directions, and especially Jupiter in its detriment. In Gemini, it's distractive. It wants to do lots and lots of things. So you may have found yourself spreading yourself too thin and this is an opportunity for you to pull back. And the pulling back will continue right through till the end of the year while Jupiter is building to its final um, mutable square with Saturn, um, which you'll get around the end of December. And uh, and that will help you to reestablish the direction forward as Jupiter then will um, uh, be meeting a forward-moving Saturn uh, around the 24th, 25th of December. And then from the 4th of October, Jupiter finally will station at about 11 degrees of Gemini, and it will start to move forward through your first house. And so there's this fear, this lovely period right now, four months of introspection or a sense of how do I restructure or better structure what I want to do. The North Node and Chiron have had you thinking quite a lot about how you want to reach out into your life, into the future the vision that you have for your engagement in society or how you perhaps how you earn a living. There may be some wounding around that. How do you fit into this world? How do you fit into society? Uranus has been in your 12th house also for a long time. That may have been um, a source of discomfort or unsettledness, let's say, unconsciously or with regards to uh, how you perceive your unconscious processes or motivations not entirely clear, perhaps, how all of that has been shaping you. And, and so this is an opportunity also to slow down and really reconsider all of these things. This may have something to do with relational um, issues as uh, or potentially around work. Venus is the exaltation ruler of your 10th house. She's in your 6th house of everyday work. And she is uh, in opposition to that Uranus as well, creating a trine to Neptune in the 10th, where Neptune is also retrograding 
um, and, and re uh, reflecting again on any disillusionment or disappointment or any feeling of not having seen clearly what you wanted to do through your career or through your social status that can include, again, marriage, for example, uh, marriage or similar relationships, um, the way that you show up out in the world uh, or relationships in general with authority figures as well. So Venus is participating in this, especially as she's also ruling the South Node as well and ruling that Uranus while it's in the 12th house of Taurus. Uh, we also have Mars in a square to this Chiron. It's, that's part of the T-square I mentioned earlier. And Mars is in your second house, generating a lot of interest and a need for action around issues to do with family or how you maintain and manage money. And Mars is ruling your uh, 11th house where Chiron and the North Node are. That's your future and also the house of gains from what you earn. Mars rules your sixth house of your obligations and work and the things that you need to do, how you need to structure your day, for example, how you need to organize yourself to get things done. Uh, it's in a trine to the sixth house, so very supportive, but this is Mars in Cancer, so there can be some issues that have to be reworked around family or there's family obligations or some challenges within family, things that need to be examined um, something that might need to be redone or perhaps um, even exchanges that you can't really rely on when mars goes through the second house difficult to rely on other people uh, you kind of have to do things on your own so you might find that you're the one doing all the supporting of family pluto has been going through your eighth house of other people's resources and that may also have changed how you have received or exchanged things with other people you may have received in the last 16 years an inheritance that transformed you um, this can also be understanding family patterns family trauma and pain and challenges that come from more hidden aspects of self overcoming fears overcoming um, obstacles to understanding yourself and now we get this very last gasp of Pluto in your eighth house pushing into the ninth house very very soon on the 19th of November from that point on Pluto is in your ninth house changing your vision for who am I how do I show up in the in my vision of my life why am I here and what do I believe and these are the bigger questions that Jupiter is already having you ask about yourself in the first house so um, a very interesting time I think quite constructive for you, it, the more that you introspect, the more that you slow down and take action based on what you really understand are your principles, uh, the more you'll succeed going forward in these next few months. It may be frustrating because there may be some obstacles, especially with Saturn in the 10th squaring that Jupiter. There may be some slowing down. There may be some sense that things are not really going in the either speed or direction that you would have hoped for. But uh, just roll with it. Be in a in that be mutable, beautiful, mutable way that you can be, Gemini. Be flexible, and uh, know that change is coming, especially as of March, um, February, for sure, when Jupiter changes direction. But March things start to speed up, and change is going to come thick and fast. You'll love it because Gemini loves that. <laughs> so all the best, Gemini. I'll see you in the next video. And Cancer, you have this happening in your 12th house, and that 12th house has to do with faraway lands, places that are either hidden or um, quiet, retreat-type energies. It can have to do also with long-distance travel, uh, with going away to contemplate or going away to understand something. The aspect of the 12th house can also be internal. It can be your inner psychological um, attention. And there can be quite a lot of your personal attention now on your spiritual life, on how you're experiencing life through that spiritual lens. And we find that especially true with uh, Saturn in your ninth house at the same time. So the Saturn in the ninth is broadly squaring that 12th house. And so there may have been a sense of maybe not believing the same things you used to or having a sense that things need to change. I, I used to think this was important. This is no longer what I find important. Um, this can have something to do with your career, especially because there seems to be a new ambition growing in you ever since Mars moved into your first house at the beginning of September. Um, so we have Mars in the first house of Cancer, 
a rising especially but also if it's your sun then mars is connecting to your sun making you feel more ambitious or mars is connecting to your moon making you feel more emotionally connected to change um which may have you feeling agitated and frustrating and frustrated needing to find some new way of showing up in this house of your social status your career how you reach out into the world but also potentially around your children in the fifth house mars is ruling Scorpio, and so connecting those aspects of your creative expansion, your creative life, the creative drive that might feel at times uh, challenged, especially because of that Jupiter in a square to Saturn, but Saturn and Mars have also broadly been supportive in a sign-based trine for the last uh, few weeks. So there can be this feeling of, I get the long haul, I get the, the bigger picture, the, the broader sense of what I'm here for. Um, but this is a, a it's a testing time with Mars going through the first house. There can be a lot of frustration, a lot of a feeling that things need to change faster than they appear to be able to change. And so there can be this feeling of frustration that builds up for many cancers. And especially if that's your moon, Mars and the moon don't combine easily. Um, it can have you very impatient or it can have you feeling... Uh, exhausted because Mars and Moon um, show there's a lot of flexibility, a lot of um, ups and downs in terms of your energy. You may not be feeling uh, very, very strongly motivated. Mars does better with the Sun. There are similar qualities, so Sun and Cam Cancer might have an easier time. And in the first house, depending on your chart, that can make you very dynamic and make you feel like you're ready to take action. But we still have this retrograde activity from now Jupiter and uh, still Saturn. And Saturn is retrograding until the middle of November. So probably you're not going to be feeling this big drive or this big action until Mars clears your first house. And at the end of October, beginning of November, moves into your second house where you're going to start to make sense of all of this agitation that you've been feeling since the beginning of September. Uh, but the Jupiter in retrograde in the 12th is also a really rich time to explore yourself, your inner desires, what it is that you want to understand about life, how to make peace with loss, how to make peace with letting go in all different ways, all different descriptions, and uh, perhaps also guiding you towards what it is that you have as a new ambition, what your new ambitions might be where that Saturn in the ninth house is showing up in the rulership of Jupiter. Um, there's also this quality of trine that comes between Jupiter and your fourth house, which is making the square from Mars to the sun a little easier. Uh, it just means that you can be a bit more philosophical if there are different, you know, differences of opinion or frustrations around home and family, uh, literal physical home property and the bigger land or house that you own but also potentially in terms of family connections and relationships and how that is all panning out for you. So it does really help that Jupiter is trining, but Jupiter is retrograde, and so it's not necessarily going to bring the best results. And it also is in its detriment, so it's not bringing us anyway the best results that it possibly can. But we'll take it. It's a Jupiter trine the sun, and that's a very, very healing quality. And it definitely adds to the, it softens, let's say, the Mars squaring the sun in opposition to Chiron. Chiron in the 10th can be part of this story of confusion around career. What is it that I'm doing? Why am I doing it? Is this the right thing? Is this the right way? Maybe it's the approach that needs changing. And Jupiter will help with that as well. Because Jupiter is all about getting to this place where you understand the why in what you do. Knowing what you do and why you do what you do is half the battle. And as long as you find that momentum and you find that initiative, you can get out of bed every single day. That's what the Japanese call the ikigai, and you find your way forward. And especially now, as you've got the last four months, wait a minute, October, November, December, only three months now, pretty much three and a half months of the North Node in the 10th house, you really want to make that push in a direction that says, this is the new way I show up in my career or in society or out in the world as I bring myself out of my cancer shell. All right, so good luck with that cancer and I'll see you in the next video. And Leo, this is happening in your 
11th house of friends, it's quite a lovely place to have Jupiter. Jupiter is very happy to be in these social houses. It's um, a house where you also get good um, help from people in high places. Jupiter represents people who are well-established or successful or wise in one way, shape or form. And when Jupiter is in the 11th, you can also gain, you can um, get just kind of uh, random help uh, from people that just seems to be lucky, feels lucky. Um, this can also be true in terms of money that comes in. Now, this depends on your natural chart. It, it's not everybody who's going to be lucky. If you are a Leo sun, uh, this is uh, true, especially because Leo represents the sun. And um, and this can be even more so true. Um, but at the same time, it's uh, it can be applying to the ascendant in terms of how you feel your life, how you shape your life around new groups of friends or new ways of seeing your future. And in terms of the Leo moon, this can be something to do with a new enterprise or a new um, uh, thing happening around your children uh, or around your home or your emotional life and the way that you um, perceive your your connections with people. So nonetheless, even retrograde Jupiter is very good in the 11th house, really helping. It also rules your 8th house of other people's money, and that is where we find Saturn in the last year and a half. And when Saturn is in the 8th house, we don't tend to get the support that we would have hoped for. And so Jupiter in the 11th may have brought you a little mitigation to that, may have felt a little more hopeful, a little more supportive than usual with the Saturn going through the 8th. But as Jupiter is retrograding, you may not still be able to rely on that support, whatever that was. Saturn has also been retrograding. Um, so there's something here that may have occurred around March or April of 2024 that you're reflecting on now, trying to figure out how to organize that. And Jupiter is helping you try to reorganize uh, your, your sense of what is important to you now, especially over the last six weeks or so as Jupiter has been uh, cruising through this part of your chart. Uh, maybe even if we go back to, we could go back to July, I'd say probably in um, already in July, you would have had an inkling of this. So from the, from the point of view of your friendships and your vision for the future, uh, Jupiter is helping you go back over the last couple of months to reassess. Uh, it is supportive, but still with that Saturn, probably you're not going to be able to clear whatever this hurdle is until Saturn is um, stationing direct itself in the middle of November. That will all start to make more sense when Jupiter and Saturn have their final square between the 8th and the 11th at the end of this year. Um, Mars in your 12th is a little bit itchy. Um, it can have you agitated or feeling frustrated or having issues around loss or frustration um, that are that are building or that things that you just feel um, grumpy about. Maybe you're you're frustrated around how things are taking shape. This can include how things shape up in your home and family where Mars rules your fourth house. Um, any issues to do with your um, father or teachers or people who are important to you in terms of counselors or lawyers, etc. That's your ninth house where Mars also rules. Um, we also have Chiron in the ninth where Mars is squaring that and that square is also accompanied by the opposition from Chiron to the sun in your third. So there, there seems to be a choice that needs to be made here that might be based on issues that come through loss or issues that come through um, how you might be connecting with family, maybe even people who've passed. Uh, this can be loss of property, it can also be loss of people, loss of the, the loved ones at this time, but um, it's, I would have to see your specific chart to see how all of this is landing for you. Mars soon is going to go, by, by the end of October, is going to go into your first house, so it's going to be much more dynamic. And within the month of November, it's going to be trining the North Node that it's ruling. So you're going to start to feel that all this buildup, all this pressure that is real for you with Mars in the 12th is going to be able to be put into motion um, you'll be able to use that uh, to a sense of higher purpose, a sense of drive and ambition in November. So um, I think that's all you need to know. Pluto is moving from, for the last time, from your sixth house of work and everyday experience and um, and how you show up in your day-to-day -day schedule or job. Um, that Pluto will finally move out of your sixth house by the 19th of 
uh, November, but on already on the 12th of October, it is direct. And so it's taking its last moves through your sixth house of obstacles and difficulty. So you've had quite a journey of 16 years, Leo, where there has been quite a lot to deal with, a lot uh, on your plate, whether that be emotionally, again, through the the moon or with your kids, uh, responsibilities or career issues for your son, or in general, in your life through rising, Leo rising. So it's something to rejoice. You've got another couple of months of this energy, and then Pluto will go through your seventh house and completely transform your connection to relationships and so on. So as you've got Jupiter in the 11th, what you can do as it's retrograding is reflect on how do I want to see my future? How do I see myself going forward in life? How do I see myself engaging with my goals and dreams and wishes for the future, but also the people that I want to spend time with? And perhaps even issues around how do I earn money? What do I, what can I gain from the way that I contribute my time and energy uh, and, uh, you know, my my um, gifts out into the world. And this is an opportune time for you to plan that October, November, uh, so that you can take advantage of that Pluto moving through the seventh in a way that is more, let's say, guided by purpose and meaning. And rather than having a feeling that you're just being kind of knocked about by the winds of fate. So that's it for now. We'll come back and have a look at the full moon that's happening in the middle of October. And I will see you in the next video. And Virgo, this is happening in your house of career. So Jupiter is retrograding all the way back to 11 degrees in your 10th house. And 10th house is your social status and your career and how you show up in your active life and in the world around you. Uh, this is quite an exciting opportunity to re-imagine, uh, uh, let's say, your career and how you show up in your job. Is this the job for you? Is this the, the, the direction you want to go? Is this the social status or the marriage or the relationship uh, that you declare publicly for you? Is this the thing that you actually want? Now, your 10th house is ruled by Mercury, just like you. And so it can change quite a lot. It can change uh, throughout your career that you can find yourself having different careers, multiple opportunities for a number of different things, including desi desiring maybe two lanes of career. You have a day job and you have another thing that keeps you engaged um, after work. And that would be the ideal outcome for a Virgo rising because Jupiter is um, showing you now that things can broaden, the perspective can broaden, but does it work? That's the question. So the Jupiter retrograde is saying, yes, you can have more, you can have a double, you can have another job, you can have two ways of showing up in your career. You probably can't have two marriages, I'm not going to go into that, but uh, but anyway, you can have different ways of showing up in your 10th house. And this retrograde is an opportunity for you to see what might be the limitations. Where did I stretch myself and want to grow? And now I need to um, figure out the details of all of that. This is trining the sun in your second house, uh, which of course relates to income, but also your resources of all kinds, including the family or the people who support you, money that supports you, belongings that support you, and your relationship to all of that. Uh, so this is quite quite helpful. There's something really um, inspiring and, and constructive here uh, for you at this time around career and around how you um, see yourself out in the world. What are your ambitions? What are your drives? We do still have this Saturn in your house of relationships. So somehow people or par uh, people that you connect with through work or your intimate relationships or your um, family obligations or family relationships are um, somehow an obstacle to whatever this is that Jupiter is showing you that is possible for you in your 10th house. It's not necessarily an ultimate obstacle. It's about something that requires a different look or a, a different approach, maybe a more mature approach, uh, potentially where you realize that you need to be a bit more um, a bit more discerning in terms of who you relate to or how you relate or the the, the, the way that you show up in relationships maybe needs to be restructured, restructured. Saturn has been with the moon for the last couple of days around the middle of October and that shows there can be a feeling of emotional isolation. There can be a feeling that something is uh, lacking. There may be a feeling of missing home or there may be a feeling of uh, not connecting emotionally. Um, and that feels um, can feel isolating. 
It's fleeting. Don't worry about it. It's fleeting. And uh, what we're building to with the Jupiter squaring that Saturn over the next couple of months is a deeper understanding of this whole mechanism of how do I want to show up out in the world. Uh, Mars is squaring the sun at this time from your 11th house. So you've put a lot of time and effort in the last couple of months uh, since the beginning of September in your 11th house of your vision for the future. And that might have something to do also with who you do that with um, in terms of the eighth house of intimacy, shared resources, um, how you see yourself intimately or unconsciously, maybe realizing aspects of your patterns or the way that you show up that have some connection to family um, because the eighth house is family secrets and also family inherited patterns. It can be money that you inherit as well, but it's certainly inherited patterns. Uh, Mars also rules your third house as well, which is about siblings, and it's in the 11th house of elder siblings. So there may be some issue here around siblings in general, um, not necessarily only, but it can also be connecting to friends in some way, shape or form. And so that square from Mars to the sun in your second house is, so, is showing that there's a difference in choice. There's something that needs readjustment to be able to make peace with this opposition from Chiron. This might have something to do with a father figure or a leader, uh, something to do with a uh, some financial agreement or um, issue around what you believe is yours or what you believe your, is your due, for example. Um, this applies both to sun, moon, as well as to the rising sign, but this might be even more pronounced in terms of the ascendant sign because it will be much more literal but also to the sun, because the sun is our um, identity and it's our sense of purpose. The moon tends to be more interior. So, uh, But nonetheless, it's by derived houses, it's going to apply to all of that energy around Virgo. Pluto is taking its very last strides through your fifth house, which has changed the way that you allow yourself to show up in the world. It's been in a shrine to your first house. It's going to move into the sixth house, changing your day-to-day -day routine, completely readjusting your relationship to health, your relationship to your schedule. If you did the nine to five before, you might completely shift and do something radically different. If you were doing something a bit airy-fairy and a bit more, well, you know, look, you're a Virgo. Yeah, still, you might be, <laughs> you might be still doing airy-fairy things, Virgo. Uh, maybe Pluto is going to restructure you in a way that builds some kind of consistency into your everyday life. This can have to do with uh, actual work, um, how you structure a job, how you overcome obstacles and overcome difficulties. And that brings you a lot of change. And so this is the last time between now and the 19th of November that you're going to be reflecting on how do you need to be seen in the world? How do you need to show up? Can you be true to yourself? Can you be yourself and just show up in the way that you'd like to, to be acknowledged, to be seen, not in that uh, sort of Instagram influencer way, but just to be seen, to be yourself. Uh, don't wait for other people to acknowledge you. Just be who you need to be and allow people to acknowledge you as such. And uh, this is a really good lesson for the last 16 years for Virgo. Um, and it will show you your power. It will show you how much courage and strength that you have as Jupiter is also showing you how you can show up in the world in a bigger way in the 10th house at the same time. So this, this is really about how you're reaching out into the world with Saturn in the 7th, changing relationships, Jupiter in the 10th, showing you who you can be. And then that Pluto in the 5th, um, really having remodeled your sense of what is available to you in terms of self-expression, how you can be yourself. This is with regards to your creativity as well. So maybe a new expression of creativity that you're now finally willing to dare to step into. Um, yeah, I'm not going to really touch on all the details just to say your ruler is also, uh, Mercury is ruling your uh, chart, of course, and it's in the third house. So there's a lot of expression and talking and thinking around all of these things. It's probably squaring Pluto. Big change. You'll see that in the introduction to this video. And it's, of course, ruled by Mars in the 11th. So whatever this thing is around your new goals and your new plans, it's about your vision for your future. And um, this, is the, this is the moment. So go for it, Virgo. I'll see you in the next video. 
and Libra. This is happening in your ninth house of your vision for your purpose here. Why am I here? What is life? What are these things all about? Jupiter is in a beautiful trine to the sun in your first house at the moment. If you are a Libra sun, then this will be roughly around your birthday time. Sometime in the middle of the month, you will all be having these influences really strongly. Um, but even still, if you're Vir uh, Libra rising, this will apply very strongly and, of course, to the moon as well. And with the uh, Jupiter being in its um, place of, of its happy place, it's, an, it's a, a very a good house for Jupiter. It represents that expansion and that higher vision for life, the belief in life, um, that Jupiter is really well um, placed for you all through this year. So you can take a great advantage. And the fact that it's retrograde is simply allowing you to to clarify, to go over things and try to understand better what it is that you see for yourself, what you believe, how do you relate to people uh, who are teaching you or guiding you, how do you connect with people or get the best out of information or knowledge that you can then use. And so while Jupiter's retrograding, you might be going over stuff that you already started to play around with since July. Uh, that may have changed you or changed your sense of your higher purpose, your your vision for your life. And uh, and now you're getting a chance to work it a little more internally or um, change the details around it, change the direction of it. This is broadly squaring your sixth house where we find Saturn. So it has something to do with your career, with the way that you're earning money. We've got Mars in your 10th, which is ruling your second house of money. Mars is also ruling your house of partnership, where we find the North Node and Chiron. That's been a big issue for you for the last year and maybe three months. And this is a, an opportunity for you to become more openly ambitious or find that new ambition that you may not have fully understood up until this point. Uh, but as that Mars is also in a square to the sun that's in your first house, there's something you need to take action on. It's squaring Chiron. There may be some realization around how you show up in relationships. It's not been working for you. You may not have been aware of how much you give away yourself or how much you wait for other people to tell you what to do. Um, that is uh, one of the uh, challenges of a Libra. Uh, the Libra energy tends to over-accommodate at times or at the very least accommodate other people to the point of frustrating other people. Um, so it's a good time to take action. Take that action that the 10th house Mars is asking you to become your own uh, decider, become your own authority figure. Um, that uh, that indecision costs other people their effort and time and money. So you want to own that and uh, own your choices, own your ambition. That's what Mars is asking you to do all of these months while it's in your 10th house till the middle of April. And again, when it's squaring Chiron, you're realizing something around this. It's squaring the sun in your first house is particularly strong. If you have a birthday around this time for Libras who are born anywhere between, say, the 11th, well, let's say even the 8th, 9th of October, right through till the end of Libra, till it moves into Scorpio. So um, a, a really interesting opportunity for you to grow and to see yourself in a new way as Pluto is also shifting from the fourth house where it's done a lot of deep cleaning around your lineage, around the, the things that support you, around the aspects of your life that have brought you here, whatever brought you here through your family lineage, your early um, experience of life and the people around you and your family, um, potentially issues around property as well, ownership or otherwise around property. And especially, especially the fourth house has to do with our um, emotional or psychological nature and how that affects us. So there's something really, really powerful in this moment of Pluto coming now out of your fourth house and going into your fifth house, where you really get to stand up and learn how to appear as you are. Just learn how to be who you need to be, to be acknowledged, to be recognized, to transform the way that you uh, produce or create things, the, the way that you relate to that cre creative expression, the way that you might relate to sexuality or love, the way you might relate to taking risks as well, and even issues around children. So as uh, Pluto is about to leave your fourth house, Jupiter is showing you a more high-minded way of, uh, of seeing your life. Very, very welcome. While Saturn is saying, here, reorganize your life this way so you can get the most out of that. So uh, make the most of this period of time, Libra, and I'll see you in the next video.
And Scorpio, hang on just a second, Scorpio. I've got to let my dog in. She's um, whining at the door. So just give me a second. Coming in, all right. Okay. I was busy with my work, so you're gonna have to lie down. So, thanks, Scorpio. Just give me a second here while we find you. Right, we're all good still. Um, it's very hot here, so my dog is struggling a little bit, she doesn't like this and this extra heat. I love it. And uh, having said that, all right, Scorpio, we have Flu uh, Jupiter moving through your eighth house of other people's money and intimacy, and uh, as well as what you might connect in, in terms of your emotional or psychological nature with other people, how you might deepen your connections with other people. It's also the place where we understand the mysteries of life and the sort of mysteries of um, the occult world, the, the the things that were that are a little bit hidden or mystical, you may be going through a phase where you're really deeply curious about these things and you're trying to learn more about that. And if Jupiter is um, going retrograde now, it will only help you do all of that because it's going to help you integrate a lot of that information, whatever it is that you've been growing into, and it will help you to reestablish um, a depth of understanding and a depth of connection with all of those things. If it's something to do with, um, let's say, a spouse or an issue that has to do with relational qualities that are not entirely above board, whatever Jupiter is going to reveal will be helpful. It'll it'll show you that something's going amiss or something has not been entirely above board or that there's something that you haven't really been catching in terms of another person. Uh, the 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 downside let's say of Jupiter going through the eighth house is that there can be some um, issue of uh, going stepping beyond the uh, the borders let's say the realm of what is acceptable within a, a partnership that depends on what you've decided is acceptable you have Saturn in the fifth house and of course that can also reflect love issues so there can be something here where the rom romantic issues uh, or issues of um, ch with children may be challenged at this time. It's all to recorrect the situation, recorrect the balance. It's not something that you need to necessarily worry about over a very long period of time. Uh, but it's definitely worth acknowledging if that's the case. Um, so Jupiter, and that's not to say that every Scorpio ascendant is going to have somebody who's not being entirely honest with them, but that if they are not being honest, this will be revealed at this time. So Jupiter retrograding through the 8th, again, it's an opportunity for you to understand things to do with family secrets. Um, Jupiter rules the house of family, it rules the fifth house of children, the house also of risk-taking, gambling, and so on. And when it's in the 8th house, we can understand, we have more compassion, we have more depth of understanding around these issues that may have affected us quite deeply throughout life. And for whether it's your son or moon, or ascendant sign in Scorpio, Mars is your ruler, and Mars is currently in the ninth house, and it also rules your sixth house of everyday work, where it's squaring Chiron, and it's also squaring the sun in your twelfth house. So there's an aspect of what you're doing, or an aspect of what you feel is your purpose in life, that is changing, and you're not super sure around your everyday job. You don't really like it anymore. You're wa You're wanting to move away from it, or you're or the job itself needs to change, and there's some way that it needs to show up in a, in a new format, perhaps. As Mars clears your um, from the ninth house to the tenth house, which is going to happen at the end of October and beginning of November, that will help you to see more clearly, uh, because then you become much more engaged and more ambitious in terms of how you show up out in the world, and that will also be more a way of informing, let's say, um, in a supportive way, informing your everyday work. Uh, when it does that, it'll also be trining the North Node in your sixth house, and that also allows you to get a feeling of, this is my new ambition, this is the thing, but it's based on what you're understanding that Jupiter's digging up from underneath, and that Mars is also showing you from your sense of what your purpose is, what your higher purpose is. Pluto is moving from the third house of where you've been reestablishing your relationship to your extended family, um, where you've been reestablishing your goals, your short-term goals, but also how you achieve things, how you use your willpower, 
how you communicate, getting closer to the truth or what is true for you. And this is the very last moment, um, these last few weeks, where Pluto is going to be there at the end of your third house, then moving into your fourth house. And when Pluto moves into the fourth house, it will completely transform your life in every area of your life. It's going to be a huge shift for you. So use this depth of understanding that Jupiter is providing for you. Use this opportunity to really get clear what it is that you're willing to risk, what it is that you need to change in terms of your love relationships or your children or creativity uh, or your, just your sense of enjoyment of life. And what do I need to change in my everyday life based on why I think I'm here so that by the time Pluto moves into your fourth house, you have a really solid sense of this is who I am and this is how I can I can um, build my foundation in a profound way so, so I can feel really solid. I can feel myself on solid ground. So good luck with everything Scorpio and I'll see you in the next video. And Sagittarius, you're going to have to just give me a second here because my dog now wants to go out again after having wanted to come in. So I'll just let her out and I'll be right with you. Right, monkey, out you go. Of course, some children. All right, here we go. So Sagittarius or sun, moon, and rising sign, but especially if it's your rising sign, this will be much more obvious. Nonetheless, Jupiter does rule your sun, and it does rule your moon, if you have that in Sagittarius. And Jupiter, your ruler, is in retrograde motion in the seventh house, right across from you. So there's a huge transformation around your relation, your relational energy, or the relationships in your life, the way that you relate to people, and who you actually relate to. This can be about business partnerships as well. It can be how you relate to colleagues as well, or people that are important for uh, achieving the thing that you do in your life, the career that you have. Jupiter, of course, is broadly squaring your fourth house, which is also ruled by Jupiter. So Jupiter rules your first house of self and your fourth house of your home and family and psychological foundation, emotional foundation, what makes you feel secure. And Saturn is there. So this has been a bit of a journey for Sagittarius because Saturn has been in your fourth house since March of 2023. And you're you're now in um, you're in this phase here where Saturn is op is uh, showing you, let's say, what structurally needs to change, and Jupiter is helping with this structural change. It's helping you get to this place that you allow yourself to understand uh, what you're willing to let go of, what you're willing to work hard for. And what you really under what you need to be happy, let's say, in relationships, what you understand you need to be happy to feel financially or emotionally or psychologically secure. Mars is moving through your eighth house. That can be a bit tricky uh, because Mars in the eighth house, especially if you're in a uh, marriage or in a relationship, on the one hand, depending on your chart, it could be great for intimacy, some really high motivation around intimate uh, connection, sex, and uh, enjoyment. But we do have a square here to Chiron, which is in the house of romantic love um, that also has something to do with children, taking risks, and so on. So there is some kind of wounding around that, and it also reflects how you show up. It reflects how you... Um, how you express yourself in general. So the Mars and the eighth might be better used, let's say at this time, for you to really um, find, courageously find yourself, find your uh, obstacles to growth, find your obstacles to relating, find any obstacles to intimacy. Mars is ruling your 12th house, which has a lot to do with the unconscious mind. It has a lot to do with ancestors in much the same way as the fourth does. Now, these are intimate places. The 4th, 8th, and 12th house are very much what, what creates our interior life. There are other aspects of it that we can see as well, but it definitely creates our interior life. So this is where you're changing quite a lot, Sagittarius. And you may at times find that you lose your sort of happy-go-lucky nature. When Jupiter is retrograding in the 7th, you will start to realize who is my friend and who's not. If you're in a relationship and it needs to change, this is the period of time where you become really aware of what needs to change. That can include um, leaving the relationship altogether. 
and recognizing what it is that you're ready to walk away from uh, that will bring you some kind of benefit. And you would see that very strongly as of 4th of February and beyond when Jupiter is in direct motion. And that doesn't mean that if you're a Sagittarius sun, moon or rising, that you are going to separate from a relationship. But it does mean that you need to do something differently in the context of relationships, whether personal or business relationships, that will improve the quality of your life. Uh, it's a necessary change. And Saturn is helping to um, create a new foundation. So it may feel, again, a bit heavy, or there may be some feeling of challenge around home, how you show up, how to restructure that, but it will give you a solid foundation going forward. And especially as Saturn will be direct at stations, direct around 12 degrees of Pisces in the middle of November. I think it's actually the 15th of November. Um, so a few weeks after this point, Saturn is going to start to pick up speed. And then you're going to find, okay, I've got this answer. I've got this um, I understand this much better. And around the end of the year, so the um, Christmas holiday season, uh, around 24th and 25th of December, Jupiter will be squaring a direct Saturn, Jupiter retrograde squaring a direct Saturn, and that will help to give you a lot more clarity around your bigger choices in life. These are existential choices, literally, like where do I live? Who, who's my partner? What am I doing for my career? These are the bigger questions. Now, the other factor in these bigger questions is that Pluto is moving out of your second house, where it's been in for 16 years connected to your family, how you got support from your family or not, or how you are, uh, how you were earning your money, uh, how did you relate to earned income or investments or your wealth in any way, shape or form. Second house is what you value. Uh, what are my values? How have those changed? That has been a significant journey also for Sagittarius. And now Pluto is on its very last uh, wings, let's say, as it cruises through the end of your second house and into your third house. And it will get you closer to what is true for you, where you get a really deep expression of uh, what is important, what is true, and how do I want to relate to my goals and uh, a feeling of depth um, around communication, a feeling of depth and gravitas that brings you to a place of uh, maybe a bit more courage or feeling a bit more courageous. Um, and that will cor correspond also to Mars going into your ninth house, where Mars will go from that eighth house of potential for friction and challenge around what you share with other people or overcoming fears. And it pulls that Mars energy into the ninth house where you get a, a sense of a vision for yourself. There's a feeling of being on a kind of a mission when Mars is in the ninth a real sense of I'm guided by a purpose. And it's uh, very much a spiritual purpose with Mars in the ninth. It's ruling the fifth house of your creative expression, your, how you're creating yourself. That's where the North Node has been. That's where Chiron has been for all this time. Chiron is squaring this Mars at this time. Or rather, Mars is squaring Chiron that it rules. And the Mars is also squaring the Sun, which is opposing that Chiron. So a lot of your future is... Um, based on this sense of what I'm ready to overcome, what I'm ready to separate myself from, how I'm ready to release any feeling of inadequacy around how I show up or how I um, how I can be myself. This is uh, that square for you between the 5th, 8th and 11th house is a, a strong indicator of that. Uh, but nonetheless, it's your ruler, Sagittarius, your ruler, Jupiter, is retrograde. And so you personally will benefit by um, a bit of turning in, turning within and finding yourself where you are right now, finding the true self, um, perhaps a bit less uh, reaching out than you may enjoy because Sagittarius enjoys lots of reaching out, lots of moving around and exploring and go deeper within. And that will bring you uh, a lot of benefit over these next four months. So that when Jupiter from February on starts to go direct, you're going to get an enormous grace, a uh, feeling of confidence and a feeling of forward momentum that hasn't really been there for you in 2024 uh, so far because of the Saturn retrograde and this Jupiter now retrograde at the end of the year. Uh, hang in there, Sagittarius. I know it's been a journey. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. 
and Capricorn. So we've got Jupiter in your sixth house of everyday work, changing directions and making you wonder, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing all the things in the right way? Uh, am I, is there something I need to tend to, perhaps in terms of health? Um, that might in involve mental health because Jupiter rules your 12th house. It also rules the third house of mind. This can also represent something to do with how you show up in your sense of work or obligations. Um, maybe there's a feeling of I need to redo things. I need to renegotiate things. The third house can also be around contracts similar to the sixth house. The third house is how you might negotiate that. Saturn has been retrograding there. Uh, you may regret or wish for change around some kind of agreement uh, or exchange of some kind that Jupiter is also now showing you can be done better. Uh, so not to worry, Capricorn, you have a lot of resources here. Your ruler is retrograde as well, so it will feel you feel a little sluggish or slow or things are not really moving as you might like them to. <laughs> Pardon me, and that is until the middle of November. And when your ruler starts to move direct, you will also feel that. And when your ruler is direct, you have a sense that you can start to <coughs> accomplish more. Sorry, Cap Capricorn, I've been speaking a lot here. Um, <coughs> The third house is the house of speech <laughs> and communication, and that's where Saturn is. So I'm kind of embodying it, even though I'm not a Capricorn rising. But um, I haven't been doing these videos for a couple of weeks. I think I'm out of shape. So Jupiter is in your um, sixth house, also trining the sun in your 10th house of career, which means that whatever it is you're reflecting on, the thing that you are um, expanding into is quite constructive at this time. It's really helpful. Jupiter trining the sun is extremely bene um, beneficial. From the 6th to the 10th, it definitely relays uh, part of the story of how you're earning your money or how you show up in the world. Is that working for you? And you have Venus in the house of gains, ruled by Mars, which is your exaltation ruler in the seventh house and so she's doing well bringing you some gains from your career or bringing you a sense of a better vision for your career at this moment when i say career 10th house represents what you do in the world even if you're retired or if you're a housewife and you're not doing anything or house husband or whatever and you're not doing anything in terms of a career or profession the 10th house shows us who are you out in the world? You, when people look at you on the street and they say, oh, there's that person that does what this, that's your 10th house. You know, so it all still applies anyway. Uh, and then that Jupiter is also um, in a sextile to Chiron in the fourth house. So there's some aspect of yourself that has been reworked with regards to your home, where you live physically, uh, maybe around aspects around your um, emotional nature or your psychological nature. And with Mars in the seventh house, this can pose potential problems because Mars is squaring that Chiron, squaring the sun, causing a bit of tension. So uh, as much as we have this lovely trine between Jupiter and the sun, we also have a square between Chiron and Mars and the sun, which is opposing Chiron. So there's something here where the issue for you may be relational. It may be about business partnership or it may be around a spouse or some other kind of partner where the thing that you're hoping for is blocked in some way by that by that partnership or by the challenge within the partnership. You might be getting, I don't know, confronted by an individual or confronted by a situation in a relationship that makes you feel a bit stuck. Um, what else is going on? Pluto, of course. You'll be relieved to know Pluto will be leaving your first house, whether it's your sun, moon, or ascendant, you have had a rough ride over the last 16 years at Capricorn. <laughs> and this Pluto is now leaving your first house and it's moving into your second house of income. It's also where you find your values and your valuables, your, your wealth as well, and family. Issues around family have already been highlighted. Pluto has already been in this place since March of 2023. Um, and so that's been a big story already, but it's only just entered into the sign, the first couple of degrees of Aquarius. 
And from the 19th of November onwards, Pluto leaves your first house and will remain in your second house. Now, a lot of the changes that you might be making here in terms of how you might earn your living or how you might need to renegotiate business partners or how you might need to reestablish a day-to-day -day pattern that works better for you will impinge and will have some kind of effect on your um, income. And this, of course, doesn't mean that you can't change anything or that you can't correct anything, but it will be a really big opportunity for you to really get clear, be very honest with yourself and say, what am I hoping for in terms of that second house of self-worth, of connection with what supports me, of um, finding my value? And this doesn't mean that you become extraordinarily wealthy. Your wealth or your income can transform can go in both directions, but it has a lot to do with your uh, deeper sense of what you're worth. And that's a far more valid way of looking at Pluto going through the second house. Uh, not everybody has money karma. Not everybody has success in terms of material wealth, but everyone has access to success and growth spiritually. So you can uh, benefit much more for, from that. What else have we got here? I think that's it for um, the Jupiter in a sextile to that Chiron, Chiron opposing the sun. This is a part of that story of what you might not realize about what you need emotionally or, um, or maybe psychologically or even materially to feel secure. And this is part of that Jupiter retrograde. It's also part of the Chiron retrograde where you get a lot of information around what, what can be helpful for you, how you can change that. The North Node has put a lot of your attention on this area of your life, including potentially home and property, your family in general, in terms of the family that surrounds you. Um, and so this is the last sort of three months with the North Node going through that part of your chart where you're finalizing all of these different areas of your life. And Jupiter is quite helpful right now in that sextile to Chiron, which is a, a long, longer term thing, several weeks. Uh, so you're really getting clear. Be sincere with yourself. Be, you know, you've gone through a lot of change. So come to that place where it's no longer about pleasing other people. This can also be part of the the benefit, let's say, of having Mars in the seventh, where you can just say to people, you know what, we're done here. I think we're moving on. This is the Mars squaring Chiron, squaring the sun, saying we are so done here. And I'm delighted to say it. Mars, remember, is your exaltation ruler for Capricorn. And you do very well with Mars. So good luck with this Capricorn. And I'll see you in the next video. And Aquarius, we have Jupiter in your fifth house where it's very, very happy. Jupiter loves being in the fifth house. However, when Jupiter is in the fifth house, and especially not in its best place, it's in detriment in, in Gemini, and it's now retrograding, you may start to realize where you have been a wee bit indulgent, where you have not really been taking good care of your belongings or your things or your relationships or your um, desires, or you've been maybe taking a few too many risks, and it's not really the direction that you should be going in. And so there's a certain um, feeling of this needs to be reflected upon. Now, it's not all bad. We have the sun in its joy in the ninth house, which is trining this Jupiter. So you're realizing this in a way that feels important. It feels like something you understand or that you're able to grow into in a way that's going to be extremely constructive. Um, I think this would be the best use of that. The Jupiter is ruling your second house of money and values. So you may have overstepped the bounds around money or values. This also is ruling your um, second house of family, whatever supports you, as well as your 11th house of your hopes and dreams. So as Jupiter is going through that fifth house where you can be um, a little bit of a, a party person <laughs> or overly indulgent or overly um, maybe focusing on yourself, uh, in a way that's not helpful with other with regards to other people, you are now invited to to turn your eyes inwards and understand, is this constructive or destructive for me? Have I been using my resources in a helpful way? So Neptune has been in the second house, so there may have been some issues of deception or challenges around resources at this um, in this period of time. And if so, this is a great opportunity to reflect on that. The Jupiter in the fifth also is fantastic for creativity. 
Uh, it brings out an opportunity for you to reflect on what you're able to share and, and offer creatively. Um, because Mercury is ruling that Jupiter and in your 10th house at the time of this transition or this change into retrograde motion, you might find that you have a new vision for part of your way of showing up through your arts or through how you might earn a living through words, uh, creative expression, uh, writing, journalism, if that's the case, writing a book. If you're if you're in the middle of, you know, if you're thinking you'd like to write a book or if you're, if you're in the middle of a project that has deep meaning for you, this is the time to hang up the phone, disconnect from social media and focus deep inside and really get the juicy bits out of the work because you can get the most of your creative expression at this time. Fantastic opportunity for children as well, uh, reconnecting with children or looking in, in new ways of being with your children. Uh, your children may require more of your attention or you might find that there's some way that you have been with your children that needs to change. Um, and that's also with the Mercury in the 10th house of parenting. Uh, that might also be something that you recognize. Mars is ruling that Mercury from the 6th house of everyday life. And that is in Cancer, which represents family. Cancer is ruling the moon, which is ruled by the Jupiter. So it's all kind of tying in there. What are my values? How am I parenting? Is that working for me and my kids? What needs to change? Perhaps it's something around communication with the Jupiter sextiling Chiron in the third house, there may be something that you're realizing around how you connect and how you speak, how you engage. Um, <clears throat> being in integrity with Jupiter in the fifth house in retrograde in Gemini, um, really helpful to understand what is in integrity, what is not in integrity, to get the best out of this. You'll certainly figure that out by the time Jupiter squares Saturn, which is in the house of uh, your values, as well as how you connect through your voice and how you connect with family. Pluto is about to move in to your first house. Now you're at the very, very end of a 16 year journey with Pluto kind of lurking in the back of your mind and in your unconscious as well as uh, maybe having you connect to people faraway places and faraway lands or, or a spiritual practice that has tr completely transformed you from the inside out. And now when Pluto is moving into your first house, you will show up in a transformed way. You will become different. But it's a result of all of this 16 years of work that you've been delving into, <clears throat> perhaps psychologically, perhaps spiritually in some way, shape or form. Um, and since that is also going to coincide with this transit of um, Jupiter retrograde, I think it's a really great opportunity for you to understand how you want to be yourself. How can you find joy? How can you find happiness? How can you be in your best self-expression? And what do you need to do to really just um, show up in your own life? And then when Jupiter, rather when Pluto moves into your first house, you will feel this um, potential for change that allows you to be very powerful. Um, <coughs> I've done quite a lot of videos around Pluto moving into Aquarius, so have a look for those. So I'm not going to go deep into that at this point. We'll do more about that, but at this point, it's really the focus is on the change in direction. Pluto is, um, Let's say it's wrapping up all of that last gasp of the 12th house for you. That may have also had something to do with ancestors, something to do with what you're understanding that you have connections or <coughs> other relationships to ancestors. Um, but your whatever, I think Jupiter is really supporting this shift from, um, from your 12th to your first house because Jupiter is ruling Saturn, which is your ruler. And then it's also broadly squaring Saturn. Whatever is slowing down is coming through a change in your values, a change in your way of expressing, <laughs> expressing yourself. Um, and I think that's it for, and then of course you're going to have the opposition 
both from the 12th to the 6th, the opposition between Pluto and Mars in your 6th house. Mars is part of your career house. It's ruling your career house. So something is changing as you're recognizing changing values, changing kind of your goals, your willpower. Based on this Chiron, perhaps also reflecting what needs to change and how you show up and communicate with people, changing your neighborhood. And that opposition from Mars from the 6th to the 12th can be very constructive or it can be um, quite volatile. And that will depend on how much you're willing to change from the inside and recognize what you're ready to change, how you need to show up in a different way. Because uh, this is really where um, this year you'll get another opposition in early November when the end of October, beginning of November, Pluto will shift into your first house and then oppose Mars that's in your seventh. And then that opposition continues into... Um, it continues into, hang on, is it October? No, it's end of November, beginning of December, that Pluto and Mars oppose from your first to your seventh. And that's for the first time ever. You'll get a few of those every couple of years. You're going to get those. But especially now, you're going to get that um, again. And this format, again, will come up in the spring, in April. So this will be Three times that you get Pluto opposing Mars, but twice will be from your first to your seventh. So make this moment um, meaningful for you, Aquarius. Change what needs to be changed in terms of your everyday life. Um, finding the courage to overcome obstacles. Change the things that are not real for you. Things that are not solid. Uh, big year for, uh, for the Capricorns and Aquarius. All right, good luck with all that, and I'll see you in the next video. Pisces, uh, we've got Jupiter who rules Pisces in the fourth house of home. There's a lot of focus on home. Where do I live? What makes me feel safe and secure? What makes me feel comfortable emotionally, psychologically? Um, am I am I enjoying where I live? Is this the right thing for me? And as that's retrograding back, it also reflects back on the retrograde Saturn, which is in your first house, which already since March of 2023 has been reshaping who you are, how you show up in the world. And with Jupiter ruling Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, it is a, a big reflection on what you need for stability and feeling grounded. There can be an improvement in household situation. The Jupiter retrograde may have you realizing what you may have chosen that might need changing or what you realize you need to do differently to enable yourself to get the thing that you want in terms of home, what home represents for you. Jupiter also, of course, rules your 10th house, which is your social status and your career. And so while Jupiter is retrograding, you're probably doing a lot of soul searching around how you show up in career. Is that the right career for you? Is it, are you doing the right thing? Are you doing enough to get yourself where you need to go? And, um, and what needs to change? Um, <clears throat> your relationship to money may have uh, been a big focus, very likely has been a big focus since July of 2023. And then Chiron has also had your attention on money and um, your values and your sense of value as well, as well as whatever supports you. Do you feel supported? What might need to change around support? That's been going on a long time, since um, April, May of 2018. So it's not news, but this time we have Jupiter in a sextile to Chiron. So there's something helpful here that you're realizing deeper understanding that brings a lot of help. We have Jupiter also in a trine to the sun, which is in the eighth house. So there seems to be a sense that there is going to be some support, something helpful coming from other people or the uh, income or things that can come through other people. Um, and then also we have the sun in opposition to this Chiron, which does suggest that there's a new way that you need to be or that you're identifying with around relationships, around intimacy, around um, money that you earn or money that you need from other people. That's all being squared. There's a T-square here uh, <clears throat> between the Chiron in opposition to the sun and Mars, which is squaring the sun and squaring Chiron, which it rules at this time. Uh, so that Mars in the fifth house shows a lot of effort and dynamism around your sense of your creative expression, maybe entrepreneurial expression as well. Um, what you, how you engage with children, and 
um, and what that might represent for your children, what their situation might be. There's some kind of dynamism there, maybe even potential conflicts around this time with children. Um, and if not, it can also be uh, if there are no children, it doesn't mean you have to, you have nothing going on in your fifth. It means that that's probably more to do with uh, intimate relationship because uh, Mars in the fifth is. Um, of course, squaring the sun in the eighth house of intimacy. So there, there can also be quite a lot of relational stuff that requires some adjustment. There may be, you know, just an, an issue that's going up temporarily, or maybe it's a longer issue that requires a little bit more um, depth. It's supported by this Jupiter trining the sun, so it doesn't look terrible. But at the same time, Jupiter is in a sextile to Chiron, so it looks like something needs healing. Something needs to be understood about what you need, what are your requirements for some kind of stability or some kind of um, uh, emotional or psychological support, perhaps. And that can also build back into your, uh, again, the 10th house of your status, social status, married, not married, etc. Parent, not a parent, uh, and also career, of course, with how you show up out in the world. You're building how you show up out in the world by the Saturn in the first house, which is a longer term thing, as well as by that Jupiter, which is ruling the 10th house, but it's creating this sense of deeper foundation for yourself that, that you can then rely on as you uh, reach out into the world. Um, quite a lot more to say in general. I just want to focus on Jupiter and Pluto at the time, at this time. So we'll, we'll keep following these things as they progress through the month, but for now, we've got Pluto for the very, very last time moving out of your 11th house of your friendships and your groups and your um, vision for your future or the dreams and hopes that you had for the future and how all of that might take shape. Now, 16 years of transformation in terms of what your dreams were. If you look back over 16 years ago, what you dreamed for, what you hoped for, it's not happening anymore and you realize that wasn't going to happen or I, I, I missed the boat or it's it wasn't really, thank God it didn't happen. Whatever it was, it's different. Your friendship groups are changing and all of this is coming to a head. It's becoming something you are absolutely aware of at this time as Pluto is just about to leave that 11th house and uh, move into your 12th house that can have something to do with long distance travel, Things that are far away or hidden on the 12th house can be as much about lands that are far away as places that are just hidden from our eyesight, uh, things that are behind the eyes, things that, are, that go on in our unconscious and, and how that might <clears throat> change us as well as um, aspects of international travel. Um, maybe a, a move to another place. Jupiter does represent international travel or places from far away. And it's in your fourth house of home. And then with Pluto in on from the 19th of November, finally moving into your 12th, maybe you're shifting. You're going in a new direction. Um, moving abroad, moving far from where you are currently, or just the the readiness, let's say, to, to dig deeper. Readiness to dig into uh, the unconscious or dig into your ancestors, dig into what is more um, <clears throat> hidden. If you work in relate in things that have to do with research or um, investigation or working behind the scenes in a clinic or in some kind of a you know something where you're not necessarily known, that also is very helpful. When Pluto moves into that part of your chart, it's going to give you a lot of um, power, a lot of capacity to do that. It's also profound healing issues around uh, whether it be mental or physical healing. Uh, Pluto moving into your 12th perhaps also entails some um, degree of loss, some degree of losing loved ones, uh, losing uh, whatever Saturn represents for you, which in this case might be friends, or it might be the groups of friends, or it might be unique people in your life, some kind of uh, representation around that. Um, but of course, that is also the nature of life itself. So that's to be expected, but it's about how you deal with that loss when Pluto is there. Not so much that it's suddenly going to happen to you, but that you're going to be utterly transformed by any loss of um, with Pluto going in the 12th. And that can also be a, a way of learning how to simplify life, which is also where Saturn comes in handy 
in the first house, recognizing what I need to restructure, how I might need to simplify. And as Jupiter is ruling that Saturn from the fourth house, you might start with what about clearing out some closets? Um, you know, that kind of um, the Swedish death cleaning, like seriously, seriously intense um, depth uh, cleaning, getting rid of stuff, moving, moving things on. Um, so Pisces, I think that's it for now. I'm going to leave it at that and I will see you in the next video. And for all of you, if you've come this far, thanks for watching. I'm thrilled to have you here. And I really do appreciate your likes and your comments. It's a great support to my channel to grow the channel. And I really, uh, really engage with the comments as much as I can. And I can't always answer all the comments, but I do try. So if you have something in there, aside from personal questions about your chart, which cannot be answered in um, in any reasonable way, if you just shall, should tell me one aspect of your chart, there's no way I can get an absolutely useful or, or otherwise um, beneficial reading uh, for you. Uh, so uh, get a reading with me. That's what I do. This is uh, my favorite thing to do is to work with people individually. So thanks for being here and thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.